Hey, what up, boys, and welcome to your daily dose of copium, where we look at topics surrounding ashes of creation, but also a dash of parasocialism from our streams live over at twitch.tv forward slash Narkivus. This series wouldn't be possible without my beautiful patrons and coped out the wazoo Twitch subs, so sit back, relax, and grab yourself a... Yo, because today we have a plethora of topics for you, starting with an amazing new update for Unreal Engine 5, but also many more topics that are shown on the screen for you. Now, with all that bollocks out of the way, let's begin, shall we? I got a question to ask you guys. Do you see this texture on the floor? It's a flat texture, isn't it? Have you guys seen the latest Unreal Engine update where they can displace the ground based off the texture? Do you think Ashes of Creation will eventually implement that? And how much better would it make the world look? Because they were like showing off, it's like tens of millions, tens of thousands of millions of polygons out the fucking, like polygons out the wazoo. I think that interacts with lighting. So they probably do that last. I mean, yeah, it would interact with, with lighting. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh yeah, this is it. Yeah, this is it. Yeah, look at this. Watch this. You think it looks great now? Like, wait until they show you the flat version of it. The snow doesn't impress. <laughs> it looks like real snow, mate. What are you talking about? It literally looks like real snow. What do you mean it doesn't impress? Here. So this is the flat version. Look at that. I look at this and it reminds me a lot of this, where this is just a flat texture. Is it possible that Ashes of Creation can eventually add this adaptive tessellation to the game? So the texture of the ground is like a flat plane. So the so the polygons, so the nanite polygons are super big. So obviously it's, it's just worthless, right? What you, what you want nanite to look like is this up here, because this is millions of polygons, whereas this is only like a couple of hundred. The guy sounds really, really excited just explaining it because his voice is speeding up he's like emphasizing his words he sounds like he's super excited as he talks about it because it's obviously a, it's obviously a huge stride in rendering techniques this technique allows you to see an unprecedented level of geometric detail but it's also memory efficient and can be changed dynamically in the runtime of your game so things like footprints or tire tracks or even supernatural effects <laughs> if you such want, want them can be visualized Ooh, now it's the billions of polygons that Nanite can render. What you expect from Nanite. So it's a really, really smart, interesting technique to actually get details in your, into the games. So again, I'll emphasize my point is, what if eventually these flat textures that we've got, what if eventually Ash's plan, or at least like trial tessellation, in the world to see, to make these flat textures pop and as somebody mentioned in chat earlier it would make sense to do it after this big lighting update so it doesn't make sense to do it now and it doesn't even make sense to do it in any any anytime soon right this would be a very last moment polish this would be like beta time period polish imagine that so yeah i get that but i'm talking about like where does it stand now in terms of like what their philosophy and like what the intent of the action is okay then so let's talk about that where do we see these spells going in the future the direction that i see the spells going in the future is something that's related to the skill tree right now most of the spells they've only got one little extra point that you can really put into them that gives them more of more functionality and improves them in various ways ultimately i think the goal for what the skill tree is going to look like in ashes of creation it's probably going to be each spell has multiple talent points that you can that you can invest into them so it's not just going to be you take the spell and then and then upgrade the spell once it's going to be more like you take the spell and then you upgrade the spell like five times and then the more points that you put into the spell the stronger it gets now when we're talking about that we should talk about things like how should the spell be upgraded should it be a horizontal progression where it's kind of like you got one spell and then you got five options and you can choose what options you want until you fill all of them up or should it be more linear where you've got one spell and then you invest one point which upgrades it once invest two points it gives you another perk then three times gives you a third perk four four perks five five perks so these are the two ways that you can do it in my opinion i think it should be linear i don't think you should have the choice i think if you want that final perk then you need to invest five points that super powerful perk that turns your whirlwind into a literal tornado the perks can be thusly so perk number one it could be just something 
simple like it adds an attack like the one that we've got already right it adds an attack onto the end right so you do the whirlwind and then you do an attack on the end and then when you invest two points it should allow you to cancel the whirlwind at any point during the ability now three points now we're starting to make stuff up so the third one could be something like during the whirlwind animation you move faster and faster and faster and faster and then if you go through the whole animation you get a speed boost and then you start running faster just for a short period of time so you're basically like building up a bunch of momentum and then you get a running speed boost so that can be the third perk so the fourth perk could be something like your whirlwind starts to inflict wound which is the bleed over time now your whirlwind hits inflict wound now we're left with the final perk and the final perk is someone just said it during whirlwind you are immune to crowd control and if you want that ultimate perk that immune to crowd control perk you need to invest five points into it and that's ultimately what i think the long-term goal is for ashes of creations like skill trees and and how they're going to design the the, the classes and stuff like that because what you got to remember is ashes of creation is is a game that's being designed in a traditional as a traditional mmorpg that means that if you want you can have up to 30 abilities on your bars if you want to and that's okay However, by having 30 abilities on your bar, you're sacrificing points to max out those core spells. So you now have a choice. Do I want to have a small amount of spells, but max out the spells that I've got? Or do I want to have a whole bunch of utility and then all the spells that I've got are not fleshed out? That to me is a really nice design and I'm excited to see where they go with it. Okay, what did you think of Leap Strike? Yeah, heroically. Yeah, it's basically heroically, isn't it? 90% of these spells are just wow spells. Did RK have a heroic leap type ability where you choose where to leap and then he, and then and then you jump into the air? Did did RK have one of those? Okay. <laughs> that looks so shit. What is that? Who was at the office at RK? I thought to myself, that looks really good, guys. Good job on that. You think it needs more of an arc? Well, we'll slow it down when he uses it. So you think this needs more of an arc? Oh my god! Maybe. maybe yeah, maybe it needs... Yeah. But then again, is it designed this way specifically to combat vertical terrain? And they did have it so it was an arc, but they changed it because when interacting with vertical terrain, it didn't quite work as smoothly. Uh... <laughs> that's a literal comet! Oh my god! But maybe that's part of the fun because maybe that big flash acts as a visual cue that tells your raid that a fighter has just leaped into your raid. So maybe that acts as a, as a visual clue. Different verticalities. Jumps, uses it. But there is a slight delay to it, isn't there? I feel like what if the ability removed the delay? I feel like that's one of the things that make WoW just feel good, right? It's the fact that nothing has any kind of build up to use, right? Everything is instant cast, instant cast, instant cast. When I press a button, I press a button and a button goes, right? That's that, and that feels good. You think upgrading it might take away the delay? Yeah, it could be an upgrade option. What about if augmenting this ability with like water magic or something removes this delay? Behind enemy lines, there's a slight delay. Yeah, I feel like that just feels bad, right? It just feels like shit, which is why Arcage feels like shit in comparison to well look when he uses it right there's this little effect go up different you see this where he's charging up and he's sucking in the energy and then he leaps verticalities that's a slight delay and i feel like maybe an augment can can remove that delay if they want the delay for like balance reasons and counterplay reasons counterplay is good then maybe allow an augment to remove the delay heroic leap was originally designed for rather the lich geek scrapped due to pathing issues well the pathing of heroic leap is that it has no pathing right that's why the ability feels good so it bypasses the original pathing issues that other charge and gap closers had uh what class do you guys want to play in ashes of creation what class are you looking forward to for alpha 2 i think the chances of summoner being there for alpha 2 launch is zero we got a lot of mages got a lot of rogues rogues what do you think is going on with the rogue? Uh, any rogues? Steven, any rogues? Any hints of the rogue? Is, is, does the rogue still exist? What's going on with the rogue? So originally, when I was watching the game, I wanted to go for a rogue, right? I wanted to go DPS or a control build. However, as I've started playing MMOs again and enjoying MMOs again, I've actually come to the conclusion that I think I would rather play a cleric. And the reason for that 
is because of the way Ashes of Creation is set up, where any armor with any weapon and the new weapon skill trees, classes that appeal to me in an MMORPG are the hybrid classes, the classes that can play multiple roles. So not only will I be able to play a, like a DPS cleric using like dual wield axes um, as a female Renkai and just being an absolute giga chad or, or dual wield katanas, right? And then infusing the katanas with light and stunning the fuck out of you from range and then just just then just destroying you, right? Not only would I be able to do that, I also want to play around with being able to make builds that can fulfill two roles so for example i could be the tank but also try and heal the group at the same time we could mess with builds like that right where we try and make make these hybrid builds that break conventional norms however another main appeal about like playing a cleric is that it can switch its role so if i can't make a hybrid build where i can do tank healing and dps i can probably make a build where a cleric can tank or i can make a build where a cleric can heal what I'm hoping is, is that there's some way to have like a build template. When it comes to build templates, there's a few like restrictions that I think need to exist when build templates are in the game. So one, you can't change your build template anywhere you want out of combat. To me, I don't think that should ever be a thing in any game. I think if you want to change your build, you have to go back to town, especially in like a sandboxy MMO like this. If you want to change your build, you have to go back to town. However, in the game, I think there should be build templates that you set up and you can switch between them at the press of a button because, you know, having to reset your points and then respend all your points, it's just archaic, right? It's 2024. Things like that, I think, you know, are fine. They're convenience at the end of the day, aren't they? They're just convenience. You set a build, save a build, you go back to town and now I can switch to the build. Because you've got to realize that moving in the, in the world of Ashes of Creation takes time. You know, there is no Hearthstone. Or at least we don't think so anyway. There's no hearthstone. You can't just hearth back to town, change it, and then come back, get summoned. There is none of that. There is no summoning. If you want to change your build, you have to commit to going back to town. And that could make, take time. And that's good. I like that. The commitment of it. However, that's why I want to play a cleric. Because I think it will be able to fulfill multiple roles, at least on some level. It might not be the most efficient at it, but for the purposes of open world stuff, it's probably going to be enough right? How punishing should respecking be, if at all? I think respecking should cost a fixed amount of currency based off of your current level. It could be a trivial amount, it can be a reasonable amount, but I think it should cost something. You don't even need like a free respec every month. Whatever, right? Just something, right? Some sort of commitment. If I want to change from DPS to healer, then I should spend I should spend a certain amount of money. Why based off level? Being able to respec at the start of the game shouldn't cost the same amount of money that it should to respec at the end of the game. That's just logic because you're going to be earning way less money at the start of the game than you are at the end of the game. So you just do it based off of level. So the more levels, the higher level you are, the more it costs until it stops at level 50 at a fixed amount. So here's how I think Ashes of Creation should work. There should be infinite amounts of templates that you can create. However, if you want to switch between a template, you need to go to the node and then go to the barracks and change it at the barracks. And you can choose which which template you want to change to you go to the vendor you choose which which template you click yes i want to switch to this one the vendor says to you okay this will cost you 15 gold you say here's your 15 gold and then it switches your spec and then that template is a template that you've created and and, and that would also encompass things like augments weapons spec slots you know all these things all these things it would all be encompassed into a, this template system yeah i saw your post Linica, for once. Uh, to be fair, no, 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 no. It's unfair to say that the comments are always negative on Artash MMRPG because I do think twice in the past as well, a uh, showcase has been super good and then... I think r slash MMORPG were like positive about it. The thing about like a website like Reddit is that it's a conglomeration of like the lowest IQ people and all they can do is react to what they see, right? And when what they see is a thing like commissions that looks a little bit like New World, people start correlating the game to New World and they start saying it's dog shit, right? Like, it's that kind of mentality, like a hive mind. And then just because of the way that Reddit is, where it's a, it's a positive or a negative feedback loop, 
There's none of this in between or any nuance to the discussion. It's either up or down. So it's like it's like because New World has something, they will associate it with New World. But then the, the, it's funny that you used fishing, right? Because R slash MMORPG's go to joke is it's not an MMO until it has fishing. Does fishing even exist? Wait, is the game a scam? Wait, does fishing? Oh no. Oh no. Wait, is it scam? Oh shit. There's no fishing. But as usual, I am just one nerd desperate for a good MMO. And that's all the news I have for you today. Make sure you tune into the stream over at twitch.tv forward slash Narcoverse as the topics from these videos tend to come organically through links from our power social freaks in chat because they're high on copium.